Hey, shortwave listeners, welcome to Scanning the Bands Part 9, the 70 and 60 meter bands that have subtitled Night Mysteries and Doomsday Signals. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is part of a series of videos that are focusing on unusual bands in the HF spectrum. And if you haven't seen them yet, go back and take a look at the previous eight videos. You can see the videos we've already completed. The ones highlighted in light green are the ones that are done. And then the light purple are the bands we're going to take a look at today, the 70 and 60 meter bands, which cover the frequency range of 40, 50 kilohertz up to 5400 kilohertz or 4.05 megahertz up to 5.4 megahertz. And looking at this web SDR waterfall spectrum, we can see it covers the 4 megahertz maritime, 4 megahertz aeronautical, the 60 meter broadcast band, and then the 60 meter amateur radio band. And not to mention many other unusual signals from digital, military, and pirate stations. So if we scan through this FCC allocation table, we can see on the left, we have the international table. On the right, we have the US table. Let's move up to where we're starting at. We can see at 4.063 megahertz up to 4.4 maritime mobile, 4.4 up to 4.488 again, maritime radio location. A lot of fixed allocations up to 4.65, aeronautical 4.657. More aeronautical up to 4.85. And then we see the first broadcasting internationally on 4.85 up to 5. And then some frequency and signal time signals, WWV, WWVH. And as we continue to move up, uh, we'll see some additional fixed allocations. And then on the U.S. side, we'll see amateur radio. So let's start in the 70 meter band, and we're gonna go from about 4050 up to 4750 kilohertz, which is mostly comprised of unusual digital signals and maritime aeronautical signals. But I'm gonna start with the most famous signal in the 70 meter band, the buzzer, the doomsday buzzer from Russia. The buzzer is located at 4625 kilohertz, and before we talk about it, let's listen to it first. So what is this monotonous signal called the buzzer? It's also known as UVB-76 or Uvoiboi Sam Chased. And just reading here, you can see it broadcasts 24 hours a day with 25 tones per minute. And although we don't know the real nature, it's speculated to be what they call a dead hand system or a transmission as doomsday radio. So the motivation behind a dead hand system was that if there were a first nuclear strike on the Soviet Union and its leadership was destroyed, there'd be some way to launch a retaliatory attack using automated communications. And this is why this is a doomsday signal. And every so often, this particular signal will break from the repetitive patterns of the buzzing and announce either a station identification or some encoded message. Let's just take a listen to the announcement of the actual name of the signal. And that's just one of the voice messages caught by listeners out there in the world. What's fascinating about this station is that it's been on for decades. And what's interesting is a voice message appeared recently uh, during the Russian and Ukraine conflict. There's tons of information online about this station. There's videos, there's articles, there's all kinds of things. Take a look at priam.org that you see here on the screen. And it, go, it goes deeper into the types of messages that are broadcast when not buzzing. So it's very interesting read. So dig deeper. It's, it's a fascinating topic to really look into for shortwave listeners. All right, let's continue on with the 70 meter band. As you can see here, it has the usual digital signals that we've seen in other bands. It's going to have Stanog, Ridifax, the usual maritime kinds of weather information that are pretty common across some of these fixed allocation bands. 
And if you want to learn more about those signals, take a look at my 35 meter scanning the bands video where it talks a lot about the types of digital signals, the common digital signals you'd, you'd see in these bands. All right, let's start at the beginning of the 70 meter band. I have a couple of free bander signals, I believe. One on 40, 40 kilohertz. I know that's under the range I, I mentioned at the beginning, but I saw it on the spectrum and I'm going to include it here. I also caught a second signal on 40, 75 kilohertz, very similar. I don't know what language it is. Maybe the, you, the listeners, know. And the second one, I got a very faint glimpse of a USB signal, and I don't know if it's a freebander or maritime. Let's take a listen. So that faint USB was on 40, 60 kilohertz. No idea what that was. All right, next up are some unusual CW signals. I don't know what they are. I don't know if they're military stations or number stations or just navigational stations. But there's four of them. One on 4090.5 kilohertz, another one on 4331, 4489, and 4831, actually in a 60 meter broadcast band. Let's take a listen. So after listening to that last signal, I'm pretty sure that's a navigational signal. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. That first CW signal is very distorted, very odd. Next up is a pirate radio station on 4185 kilohertz. I don't know what it's called. Let's take a listen to that. I had to keep that pretty short because I don't want to get a copyright strike on the music. But if anyone knows what that pirate station might have been on 4185, please add it to the comments. Then on 4651 kilohertz was a voice signal. I thought maybe it was Volmet, although I'm not entirely sure. It could be military, but if anyone knows, please add it to the comments. Pretty sure that's Volmet, but again, leave a comment if you think of something else. All right, next up is Kodar. We have not talked about Kodar before. It's kind of an interesting signal to see. Let's just take a look at it first. So that was around 4780 kilohertz. If you look into Kodar, it's actually a fascinating technology. It stands for Coastal Ocean Dynamics Application Radar. And amazingly, it can map near-surface ocean currents. So it basically uses an array of HF 
antennas with HF frequencies and it can act like a radar to measure wave heights and actually even estimate wind direction for shipping. Well, that's it for the 70 meter band. Let's jump to the 60 meter band now, which is gonna cover 4,700 kilohertz up to 5,400 kilohertz. I'm gonna start with the 60 meter shortwave broadcast band. I'll go through those pretty quickly. First up is the voice of Indonesia on 4755 kilohertz. Next is China National Radio on 4800 kilohertz, which we've heard many times before in other bands. Next one's interesting called Shortwave Australia on 4835 kHz. Then on 4920 kHz we have the Chinese station PBS Shijiang, which is, stands for People's Broadcasting Service of the area of Shijiang, China. Then on 50, 20 kilohertz, we have Solomon Islands radio, probably a highly unusual one to catch. Then this next one I don't know much about, Baibu Bay Radio, I think it's Chinese. I'm not sure if it's a pirate Chinese station or an actual Chinese station. It'd be great to hear some comments about this one. And then the last one on 5130 kHz is Afghan radio. This would be a really hard one to get. Uh, but great catch if you have a short wave in Europe or Asia. I was barely able to pick it up on one SDR, but take a listen. The last station is outside the standard 60 meter shortwave broadcast band. And there are others like Voice of China, which is similar, which would broadcast outside the 60 meter broadcast allocation. But that was just a sampling of that broadcast band. I know there's more stations than that, and it'd be a real challenge for shortwave listeners. So try to try to listen to 60 meters if you can get a chance. All right, let's finish up with the end of the 60 meter band. We're gonna take a look at a few unknown signals in that kind of 5100 to 5250 kilohertz range and above 5250 up to 5400 is gonna be the amateur radio spectrum and some unusual military signals. First is on 5186 kilohertz. I don't know what this signal is. I couldn't find an identifier for it. Maybe you guys know, please put it in the comments. Same on 5209 kilohertz. It's another signal I could not identify. Then on 5313 kilohertz in the 60 meter amateur band, I picked up this Slavic USB signal, and I don't know if it's Russian or Ukrainian or what it is. I don't think it's amateur radio. Take a listen. Also on 5374 kilohertz in the 60 meter amateur band, I picked up what sounds like the Russian military broadcasting on USB. Take a listen. Yeah, 
Then to wrap this up, we'll talk about the 60 meter amateur radio band. It's allocated in the United States to five distinct channels. Amateurs in the US can use various modes on these channels. I'm not sure about the international community for 60 meters, but they're not heavily used. So let's take a listen to a couple samples. Well, that's it for the 70 and 60 meter shortwave bands. I know it was a lot of information and there's a lot of signals there. Please add any additional comments so you can think of other stations or other interesting signals that would be in that frequency range. As always, I always appreciate you watching. All the subscribers, please subscribe if you haven't. It really helps the channel. It's free and hopefully we'll get more of these videos out soon. So take care and keep listening to Shortwave.